Hi, and welcome to this episode of I've Got This Kid. I'm your host, Sharina Williams, licensed speech and language pathologist, homeschooling mom of two, wife of one, excited podcaster, ready to be here another day with you all. And we are going to get the ball rolling because that is what we do around here. I hope you've tuned in to the last two episodes where we've been talking about advocacy. I hope you enjoyed our special guest. She was awesome. Kim is amazing and I'm so proud of her and I'm so proud that she was able to devote some of her time to spend with us, y'all, giving y'all some tools that you need from the inside, finding people from the inside to help us on the outside. And I hope you also enjoyed the other episode, Seeking a Second Opinion. When do I get a second opinion? How do I get a second opinion? Maybe I need a second opinion and how to even determine what that looks like. And so today we're going to continue with that ball. Again, we're looking this time at growing and learning so we can better connect with our community and with our sugars. And so today we're going to be talking about navigating school services. Is the school offering what I need? And how do I even know if the school is offering what I need for my sugar? Uh, How do I determine that? We're going to find that out. And so I've talked about this time and time and time and time again, the role of the education system. And I don't even think I talked about it on one episode. I think I've talked about it across multiple episodes. And, And it's for a reason, because I don't want us to ever lose sight that the educational institution is a tricky beast. And so for one sugar, a school district, it can be the equivalent of that beautiful glass slipper that fits to a T. While for others, it may not be such a great fit. It may be the pumpkin. I'm just saying. And it doesn't make the school district a bad school district or the school a bad school. It just means that it's not a great fit for your sugar. However, if you live in an area and you have a sugar that needs individualized services, then it's crucial on another level how to navigate through these school services. And I've talked about that before, and I can't overemphasize that I have talked about that before because we do need to have this stuff in the back of our mind and reframe our minds and our framework about how we perceive our educational systems and what role they play, right? Our educational systems. I'm going to review real quick, though. They help our sugar learn. They help our sugar develop functional skills. They help teach our sugars trades and crafts in some cases. And it can be, in some cases, a setting for sugars to learn how to navigate life with their peers. I think this can also happen in other areas, but this is definitely the first place that we think about when we're like, how is my sugar going to learn social skills? But I've talked about that before. Like, there's different ways to do that. However. While schools are all these things, sometimes they're not. And it's, again, because they're not required to be. Not always. It's good if they are, but they're not required to be that. And so this holds especially true for for world changers whose sugar needs specialized services. Because, again, the glass slipper. I want you guys to always think about it from the lens of a glass slipper. Is this a good, perfect fit or not, right? Or as close to a perfect fit, because I don't want to create any Pollyanna situations to where like we think that it should be every, every, everything, but at least something that falls in alignment and is a better fit than some others as compared to some others. So today we're going to break down how to navigate through the school system and ask the questions that you should ask yourself before, before enrollment, because as world changers, you have rights and it's important to understand those rights to get what you and your sugar need. So one, what kind of learner is my sugar? This matters so much because from those toddler years, those infant years, those interactions, that five to seven minutes of play, observing your sugar and what makes them tick, what kind of learner they are, what kind of play do they enjoy? How do they learn best through play? How do they learn best through life? Knowing this will help before going into a school. So if you have a sugar who you know enjoys a lot of movement, it's probably best to find a a setting that allows for more free movement and allows for sugar to move or use alternative seating instead of traditional seating. 
Or if you know that your sugar gets super stressed out when a lot of pressure is put on them, then academic rigor may not be that place where it's super structured. Maybe a different kind of setting to where there is rigor, but it's placed on them in a different way or they're allowed to like think and do, right? What kind of learners your sugar? Know this before going into the door, right? And so before entering into the school, you should ask specific questions about their structure, about the principles. What's their, what's their philosophy? What is it they believe in that school? Because a lot of times the leadership is going to dictate the flow of the classrooms and the teaching and the way that sugars are taught. And every school has some kind of philosophy. Every school has some kind of principle, something that they believe in how a sugar should be taught. It's important to find a place that fosters and nurtures that. Another reason why you want to do that is to determine if the, the teaching style is in alignment with your sugar's learning style. And so sometimes this can go from classroom to classroom. Different educators teach in different ways and they have different philosophies and different principles and just different ideals on how to teach. And, and it works for some sugars and it doesn't work for other sugars and it, it, it you know doesn't work for some sugars and it works for other sugars. It just depends, right? And so understanding their teaching style and the teacher's style will be very helpful in understanding if this is a good place or a good fit for your sugar. Knowing the kind of learner your sugar is also should tell you before you even go into the school, what kind of disciplinary methods are the schools enacting? If you've been disciplining, let's say using a more less rigid kind of way, maybe more of timeouts, let's talk this through, then putting your sugar in a school where strict discipline is enacted. You know, if you break the rule, we're not going to talk about it. You either follow the rule or you don't, right? You either do or you don't. Some schools are like that. And it's not a bad thing because some sugars really do need like that structure. And unless you're a world changer that's looking to provide that kind of outside structure, it may not be a good fit with the way that you do things, which then takes away the collaboration between you and the educators. Because why? Because you guys are looking at things from total different lenses. If you want your your sugar's educator to talk things out, but your sugar's educator is more used to like, why didn't you follow my rule? Then it's not going to necessarily mesh well together. And so knowing that before going in, navigating that before going in and making that decision to enroll is super crucial. Next, what's my sugar's diagnosis? What is my sugar's diagnosis? This is so important to know and understand why. Because some schools specialize in neurodivergence. Some schools have a better understanding of neurodivergence. Some schools do a better job fostering and creating strategies and roadmaps to help your sugar along. Whereas other schools, that may not be their jam. That may not be their scene. And again, most schools are good at what they're good at, right? And it doesn't mean that they're not a good school. We're going back to that glass slipper. And so we want to make sure that it's a really good fit. And so if you know that it's not a good fit and you know that your neurodivergent sugar is not going to mesh well with that style, then it's not going to be a great fit. And it's best to probably find a different setting or a good location, no matter how many great reviews they got. What are my sugars characteristics associated with their diagnosis? It's almost not enough now. (laughs) to know what the diagnosis is. And this is why I said um, in my last point that it's important to know and understand the diagnosis. Understanding the characteristics, what are some things that come along with that that are specific to my sugar? It's not the same. Like you can go on WebMD, you can go on Harvard Medicine, you can go to all kinds of different places. You can go to the top institutions, you can go to the top hospitals and they're going to give a very good general overview. Even some of the stuff that I give is a really good general overview, but it doesn't speak to every situation because it's impossible to speak to every situation because everybody was created differently, even with the same diagnosis. And so the characteristics that come along with it, is it more behavioral? 
do you see more behaviors out of your sugar that need to get, uh, you know, reframed? Is it more of a speech and language or a social skills thing? Or is it attention and processing and focus? And to understand more about that, you can listen to some past, um, the past series on the What Is It series where I go into deeper detail on what those different things look like. But understanding the characteristics that come along with that, do they behave when they cannot communicate? Do, does their attention go a certain way if X, Y, Z happens? Understanding that will under, help you understand how to navigate where it is that your sugar should be placed and if the placement is exactly where they shouldn't be. Why is this important? Because you can ask these questions to the school about how they treat specific diagnoses. For example, if your sugar has a diagnosis of a stutter or a disfluency disorder, but the school SLP has no knowledge how to work with that population, chances are it might not be the best fit. So it might be a conversation that needs to be had. Like, are there any other SLPs in the district who have worked with this population or who can coach the SLP on staff or who can attend meetings or look at what we're doing or, 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 or. And that's just one, one case. Or if your sugar has difficulties with attention and learning and focus and the primary educator is constantly calling you or labeling your child as behavioral to the point where the other kids are starting to label the little sugar as behavioral. Rather than understanding the root cause, chances are they might not be the best fit or they need some continuing education to help along or a conference needs to happen where you guys can collaborate and communicate about your sugar intelligently. Now, if you've listened to the advocacy episode, you understand how that kind of plays out. If I understand my sugar, if I know my sugar inside and out, and if I've taken the time to understand their behaviors and what are triggers for their behaviors, then I can talk to the educator and say, oh, this is what happened. It was a trigger. And also for that educator to be able to recognize what are certain triggers? What are things that get sugar off track? What are things that that stop sugar from pushing the progress? Like we're all about pushing the progress. And so this isn't a punishment for a parent or educator or sugar. This is really for us to get into the know so we can make better choices together. And understanding our sugars, it's the first step to navigate because then you'll know the questions to meet with the staff. And the best time to meet with the staff Again, it's always before enrollment, but if you've already enrolled, well, let's go back to before enrollment. If you're looking at a school and you're thinking about enrolling your sugar and you want to know more about the philosophy and you want to know if it's going to be a good fit and you want to know if their teaching style and learning style and and disciplinary methods are a fit in alignment with your, your family needs and your sugar's needs, then the best time to go is in the late fall early winter when they're doing open houses for new families. And the staff is usually there. A fair amount of staff is usually there. Why? Because they want to represent the school in the community. They're telling you during that time who they are. And and that's the year prior to admittance. And so that way you can find out which schools are more in alignment with principles and philosophies and things that you feel like you are comfortable being in collaboration and community with and your sugar is going to be happy and comfortable being in collaboration and community with. And most importantly, it is pushing them forward. We want to push to progress. Number four, does the school offer the services that you need, that your family needs, that your sugar needs? It's so important to understand not only what your sugar needs and understand the type of learner they are, identifying what their specific needs are, but also going into this understanding that every school district is different. Every school is different. And also being specific when reaching out to schools to determine what areas they will and won't support, having those questions up front. And honestly, it sometimes doesn't have to do with will they or won't they, it it has to do more with the capacity. Do they have the capacity to be able to support what you need? If you're getting three fourths of what you need, then winner, then we'll have to outsource for the other parts, right? Number five, being comfortable and being prepared to cover the cost. That goes back to that 75% I just said. If your sugar school is covering 75% of the cost of services 
that you don't have to pay out of pocket for, whether that be speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and they're providing specialized services, then if you want additional therapies to help push to progress, then by all means, if you can do it or seek out a way to get it in another way through your medical insurance, there's ways to navigate that. And we talked about that in another podcast episode, Navigating Insurance. But remember, y'all, it's not necessarily the school's job to cover everything. And I want world changers who can to be comfortable with the idea that if the school doesn't offer it, it's okay to pay it privately. And in most cases, you can write the stuff off in your taxes. And keep the perspective always that we're pushing the progress. So don't get discouraged if the school doesn't offer it. Find a way, make a way, right? Number six. This one is near and dear, and I'm just starting to get like more familiar with this because this is an area that I have not necessarily had to personally deal with because I live in a big city. But for you providers out there and you world changers out there that live in a small district or in a place that doesn't have a lot of access, whether that be the Internet or whether that be services at school or whatever it is, like maybe the school does have the budget, but can't necessarily attract the people, the talent to come and provide the services. Keep in mind now that the internet has now, COVID for sure, has opened up the world. Like there were providers out there who were doing things virtually pre-COVID, but now we know that services can be provided virtually. And you can find now, you can kind of pick and choose who you want. And providers are now willing to see sugars across different time zones if it's appropriate, right? If it's appropriate to the time, the space, and your specific need and your sugar specific need. And in some rare cases, schools will cover a portion of the cost if it's something that they cannot provide and the district does not offer it, but it's something that your sugar needs or the district does offer it, but they can't find someone. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but it's worth a shot to ask and to get that conversation or what is their willingness. Say, for example, if it's a service that they do provide, but they can't find a provider, Maybe that's a conversation when you can ask, can we outsource and find someone who will? Can we work together? Can you guys find someone? What can we do? Again, always thinking in the mindset of collaborating and not playing the blame game. And finally, finally, try to approach things from a positive collaborative space. You know, that's one of my favorite words, collaboration. It just gets so much more done. I'm just saying. Sometimes Voicing your opinion and explaining the why can get you farther along. It really does. Just explaining your your position, your your idea, your why you need this, why your sugar needs this. If they were getting it and this are suddenly not getting it, especially if it could be justified that they're not making progress in a certain area. Sometimes voicing your opinion will get you pointed in a direction with another referral. Sometimes the school may not be able to offer you what you need, but they can get you into the hands of someone else who can. That's important because usually other therapists, other providers, educational systems know people outside of their district who can support you. Another point, trust your gut, know your sugar, understand their needs, know who They are in order to make these informed decisions about their educational needs and just trust yourself in this process. If the school can't do it, let's find another way. Let's make another way. Let's not get discouraged. Let's really trust ourselves and just keep pushing forward. Let's not stop, right? Let's just keep going. Which leads me to my next point. Do not settle. Remember, this is your sugar. This is not the time to be passive. And this may be the time where you need to get some support from an advocate. The advocate may be able to help you navigate or at least voice your perspective, right? That's sometimes important. Maybe you don't have the words or know how to quite get it out the way you want to get it out, but the advocate can help in that way. And finally, be realistic. Be realistic. Be realistic with yourself. Be realistic about your sugar and where they are. Because if the goals that you're seeking aren't quite realistic, then it's really hard to justify how to navigate and what you need to navigate. So in that case, seek a second opinion to see if your observations and your needs match, right? 
just like we want the schools to be reasonable, we also want to be reasonable when we're approaching these educational institutions. So remember, world changer, navigating the school district, it does not have to be a daunting task. It doesn't have to be that. But, but we can be intentional. We can. We can totally do this stuff as long as we keep an open mind and an open heart. We'll be able to navigate. Remember, doing nothing, it hinders the process. It, it, it really does hinder the process. And not only that, it hinders progress. And I don't like hinder progress. I don't like hinder progress at all. So you've got to figure out how to get what you need for your sugar's benefit. But that does start with knowing, learning, connecting, growing together, right? If we're not connecting and growing, then how will we be able to learn what it is that they need when we're approaching? We can't just go in there and blindly shooting, y'all. We got to make sure that we really are not only well informed, but we're able to communicate or seek out the help of others who can in order to get our sugars to what they need. And as always, if you have any questions with this episode, if you have any questions about this episode or any of my other episodes, do not hesitate to reach out to me at questions at I've got this kid.com. I can also be found on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter or on my website at iheartspeechtherapy.com. The links to my social media pages are in the show notes. As always, I would love to hear from you. Do not ever think that there's a such thing as a silly question, more or less an unanswered question. So get those questions answered. And tune in next week where we're going to discuss is virtual learning killing our kids future? Ah! We will have a special guest, Dr. Tonya East Fanner. And I cannot wait to have her here with us. She's going to share her perspective and it's going to be a wonderful show i cannot wait for you all to tune in i can't wait to share this information with you guys until the next time world changers take care <laughs>